Hello everyone. So are we live? Yes, we are live. Hello everyone. Good morning. A very good morning on a Sunday morning, on a Saturday morning. Okay. So, आज हम क्या करने वाले हैं? आज हम endometrial cancer के कुछ MCQs करेंगे आधे घंटे और उसके बाद evening में हमारी same topic पे class होगी. Just a 45 minutes revision. 45 minutes की class है. Starting at around 7 p.m. Finishing at 7:45 p.m. And we'll finish endometrial cancer because it's a small topic. Okay. So. मैं हूं डॉक्टर सोनल परिहार आपकी ऑब्जन गायनी कंसल्टेंट ऑन आर एकेडमी एंड आई एम एन एंडोस्कोपिक सर्जन ट्रेंड कॉल्पोस्कोपिस्ट एंड साथ में एक मिनट वन सेकेंड डिड नॉट सेलेक्ट दिस पेन सो सो आई एम एन एंडोस्कोपिक सर्जन प्रैक्टिसिंग फॉर द लास्ट ट्वेंटी टू ईयर्स इन जोधपुर राजस्थान एंड आई हैव माई ओन प्राइवेट हॉस्पिटल आई एम आई यूट्यूबर आज के ऑर्गेनिक कॉलेजेस एंड डॉक्टर सोनल स्टोरियल्स ये मेरे दो चैनल हैं जिसपे मैं वीडियोज डालती रहती हूँ फॉर द पब्लिक द जनरल पब्लिक एंड द डॉक्टर्स एंड ऑफकोर्स द स्टूडेंट्स ठीक है तो इस तरह से हम आगे बढ़ेंगे डॉक्टर सोनल मेरा कोड है बच्चों प्लस सब्सक्रिप्शन जो कि पेड सब्सक्रिप्शन है अन अकेडमी का उसके लिए आप जब जब मेरा कोड यूज करेंगे तो आपको 10 परसेंट डिस्काउंट मिलेगा और अगर आप कोई फ्री क्लास देखना चाहते हैं बहुत सारी क्लासेस फ्री भी होती हैं तो भी आपको ये कोड यूज करके उसको अनलॉक करना पड़ेगा क्लास अनलॉक नहीं होगी ठीक है प्लस में आपको उस अन अकेडमी के सारे टीचर्स मिलेंगे सारे ट्यूटर्स मिलेंगे आइकॉनिक अगर आप खरीदते हैं अगर आपके पास टाइम है और आपका एग्जाम अभी एक महीने बाद नहीं है अगले साल है तो फिर आइकॉनिक में आपको अन अकेडमी और प्री पैडलर साथ में मिल रहा है प्री पैडलर को अलग से खरीदने की जरूरत नहीं है तो आपको दोनों ही एप्स के सारे ट्यूटर्स के नोट्स एंड एम सी क्यूज एंड क्विजेज एवरीथिंग मिलेगा इसमें भी आपको टेन डिस्काउंट मिलेगा अगर आप मेरा कोड यूज करेंगे ठीक है सो दैट इज इट देन प्रीवियस थ्री ईयर्स के जो क्वेश्चन पेपर्स हैं ये बैंक्स क्वेश्चन बैंक्स रिलीज हो चुके हैं फॉर ऑल द थ्री एग्जाम्स एफ एम जी ई नीट पी जी एंड आई एन आई सी टी इसको आपको खरीदना पड़ेगा प्लस सब्सक्रिप्शन पर जाके और आप इनके हेल्पलाइन नंबर पर कॉल कर सकते हैं द हेल्पलाइन नंबर इज एटी फाइव एटी फाइव एटी फाइव ये हर बार बताती हूँ मैं फिर भी बहुत सारे न्यू लोग जुड़ते हैं इसलिए हर बार बताती हूँ एटी फाइव एटी फाइव दिस इज़ द हेल्पलाइन नंबर कॉल देम एंड आज देम कैसे खरीदना है लाइट सब्सक्रिप्शन आज द नेम इंडिकेट्स फेदर लाइट है फेदर की तरह लाइट इसलिए है क्योंकि इट इज़ ओनली टू थाउजेंड फोर हंड्रेड जिसमें कि आपको नाइनटीन सब्जेक्ट्स के आपको सारे क्वेश्चन मिल रहे हैं 19 सब्जेक्ट्स ओके दीज आर द 19 सब्जेक्ट्स विच आर कवर्ड और अगर आप डॉक्टर सोनल वाला कोड यूज करेंगे तो ये 2400 से और भी कम हो जाएगा 10 परसेंट डिस्काउंट हो जाएगा तो बहुत ही सस्ता हो जाएगा एंड इट इज फॉर पीपल हु आर अपेयरिंग द डॉक्टर्स हु आर अपेयरिंग इन द एग्जाम इन द नेक्स्ट वन मंथ जिनको अब थ्योरी की जरूरत नहीं सिर्फ एम प्रैक्टिस की जरूरत है तो आप इसको अवेल कर सकते हैं इट्स अ वेरी नाइस प्लेटफॉर्म क्योंकि तरह तरह के एम सी जितने एम करोगे उतनी आपकी नॉलेज चेक होगी ठीक है सो गो फॉर इट राइट नाउ लॉन्चिंग एम बी बी एस प्रॉफ वन दैट इज फॉर द लिटिल डॉक्टर जो अभी फर्स्ट ईयर में है जो अनाटमी बायो केमा फिजियो पढ़ना चाहते हैं हेल्पलाइन पर कॉल करिए अन अकेडमी ने आपके लिए भी लॉन्च किया है डाउट क्लैरिफिकेशन सीरीज लॉन्च हो चुकी है प्लस प्लेटफॉर्म पर जो कि सिक्स अप्रैल से लॉन्च हो चुकी है जिसमें कि मैं भी हूँ ऑब्वियसली सारे नाइनटीन ट्यूटर्स हैं आपके आपको इसको खरीदना पड़ेगा प्लस सब्सक्रिप्शन में जाके एंड देन यू कैन टॉक टू योर ट्यूटर्स यू कैन यूज द कोड डॉक्टर सोनल टू गेट द डिस्काउंट और जहाँ जहाँ फ्री क्लासेस हैं स्पेशल क्लासेज वहाँ पर आप सिर्फ कोड यूज करके अनलॉक कर सकते हैं क्लास को दीज आर द टॉपर्स फ्रॉम लास्ट ईयर एंड होपफुली इस साल भी हमारी एक लंबी लिस्ट निकलेगी टॉपर्स की नाउ स्पेशल क्लास जो है ये फ्री क्लासेस होती हैं जैसे कि मैं हर बार बताती हूँ जब हम लोग अन अकेडमी पर फ्री क्लास लेते हैं तो आपको नोटिफिकेशन आएगा अगर आपने बेल बटन ऑन करा हुआ है जैसे यूट्यूब पे तो फ्री क्लासेस होती हैं आप इसको बेल बटन को ऑन करिए और आप अन अकेडमी के लर्नर्स ऐप पे जाके सिर्फ मेरा कोड यूज़ करेंगे डॉक्टर सोनल तो ये क्लास अनलॉक हो जाएगी एंड इट इज़ अ वेरी इंटरेक्टिव क्लास आप मेरे से डाउट्स पूछ सकते हैं लिख के या फिर आप अपना हैंड रेज करके मेरे से ऑडियो में क्वेश्चन पूछ सकते हैं ठीक है और लाइव क्लास का मतलब ये नहीं कि अगर मिस हो गई तो मिस हो गई वो हमेशा ऐप पर रहेगी आप उसको सुन सकते हैं नो नीट पी का जो डेढ़ महीने का बैच है वो बन चुका है जिसमें मैं यहाँ पर हूँ और सारे ट्यूटर्स हैं आप सारे रिवीजन क्लासेस इंटरेक्टिव लाइव क्लासेस रिकॉर्डेड क्लासेस ऑल द ग्रैंड टेस्ट जो कि फोर्टनाइटली होते हैं क्वेश्चन बैंक्स आप अवेल कर सकते हैं डेढ़ महीने का छोटा सा सब्सक्रिप्शन आपको लेना है और आपका क्रैश कोर्स कंप्लीट हो जाएगा एफ के लिए टू मंथ्स का बैच बन चुका है इसमें भी आपके सारे ट्यूटर्स हैं सारे सब्जेक्ट्स के ट्यूटर्स आपके साथ आपको हेल्प करेंगे तो आप इसको खरीद सकते हैं ना ये टेस्ट जैसे कि हम लोग हर बार वीकली या फोर्टनाइटली संडे को लॉन्च करते हैं तो ये टेस्ट कल है बच्चों आप इसको अवेल करो नौ बजे सुबह उ
वीक है और कुछ टॉपिक्स तो ऐसे ही रिवाइज हो जाते हैं क्वेश्चन के थ्रू और इसका वीडियो सोल्यूशन आपको मिल जाएगा सो गो फॉर इट जस्ट कॉल ऑन द हेल्पलाइन नंबर एंड रजिस्टर और इसमें आप मेरा कोड डाल सकते हैं डॉक्टर सोनल ठीक है सो कमिंग टू द एम सी क्यूज लेट एस स्टार्ट नाउ एट पीपल आर वॉचिंग लेट एस स्टार्ट विद एम सी क्यूज तुषार हाय गुड मॉर्निंग सो वॉट इज द आंसर फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन राइट द क्वेश्चन नंबर अलॉन्ग विद द आंसर ओके सो लेट सी हाउ मेनी क्वेश्चन वी कैन डू एंडोमेट्रल हाइपोप्लेजिया इज ऑफन एसोसिएटेड विद वॉट सिस्टिक टेराटोमा एंडोडोमल ट्यूमर पी सी ओ एस और सर्टर्ली ट्यूमर सेल्स टेल मी Okay, so we have answers here. Please write the question number also. I know this is just the first question, but that's fine. In the next answer, please write the question number also. Okay. Now it is C P C O S. Yes, you are right because P C O S may unopposed estrogen hota hai, unopposed estrogen stimulation ke wajah se endometrial hyperplasia hota hai. The treatment of choice for endometrial hyperplasia without atypia. Okay, so that is hyperplasia without atypia. What will you do in a 38, 32 year old woman? Now where is the cursor? I can't see the cursor. It is so small. That is it. That's the pen here. <laughs> so difficult to underline. Okay, without atypia in a young woman, thirty-eight, thirty-two year old, what will you do? Okay, two. Uh, somebody is saying B. Somebody is saying C. Then B. Okay. Anyone else? So obviously you will not do hysterectomy. It is an eight. It is no ATP and that to a young patient. GnRH analog no. So the confusion comes between OCPs and medroxyprogesterone acetate. Now OCPs are mainly used for what? It is used for uh, the uh, regularization of the class, uh, uh, cycles. अगर आपको cycle को regularize करना है, irregular cycles है, adolescent woman है, adolescent girl है, then you give OCPs. But in hyperplasia you need to cut down the estrogen supply. तो जब आपको cut down करना है, आपको endometrium को पतला करना है, उसकी हाइपरप्लेसिया को कम करना है यू हैव टू यू कैन से अंडर प्रोडिफ्रेट करना है देन यू हैव टू गो फॉर मेड्रोक्सी प्रोजेस्ट्रॉन क्योंकि वो एंडोमेट्रम को पूरा ड्राई कर देगा सुखा देगा ठीक है सो दैट इज द आंसर नाउ द फॉलोइंग आर प्रीकर्स ऑफ एंडोमेट्रल कार्सिनोमा एक्सेप्ट What is not a precursor of endometrial carcinoma? Atypical adenomatous hyperplasia, atrophic endometrium, adenocarcinoma in C2 या फिर cystic hyperplasia. Question number three. Okay, we have one answer. Atypical adenomatous hyperplasia, atrophic endometrium, adenocarcinoma in C2, and cystic hyperplasia. What is not a precursor for endometrial cancer? Okay, so we have three people, four people answering. Uh, Duri Ravi Shankar, this is question number three. Yes, why did you write four, Napoleon? Okay, so the answer is atrophic endometrium, and that is right. Atrophic endometrium obviously will not uh, is not a precursor for endometrial carcinoma. Atypical adenomatous hyperplasia is definitely a precursor. Cystic hyperplasia also, although there is no atypical change, but still there will be a three percent chance of this getting converted into cancer. And adenocarcinoma in C2 is as such a cancer. Okay, so it is atrophic endometrium, which is the most common finding in uh, postmenopausal women who come with bleeding with a thin endometrium. Okay. Okay, most malignant variety of endometrial cancer carcinoma. What is the most malignant variety? It's okay, Napoleon. Duri Ravi Shankar cystic hyperplasia is a precursor. That is why we keep doing DNCs or endometrial biopsy for such patients every six months if they don't end up in a hysterectomy. Okay, question number four. Most malignant variety of endometrial carcinoma. Endometrioid cancer, papillary serous cancer, clear cell cancer, या फिर adenosquamous carcinoma. Okay, we have one answer, Napoleon. Anyone else? 
फोर सी फोर डी फोर सी फोर डी ओके सो द मोस्ट मेलेग्नेंट वन विल बी just like just like the ovarian cancers the clear cell carcinoma is the most malignant one papillary series we don't actually see such kind of cancer in endometrial cancers and we will be reading this in the evening today in the 45 minutes class what are the different histopathological findings okay so it is not adenosquamous most common cause of postmenopausal bleeding will be what i just told you obgyn student it is uh, it is definitely c that is clear cell car carcinoma most common cause of post menopausal bleeding most common cause of post menopausal bleeding hrt atrophy cancer or cervical cancer okay we have one answer from obgy student what's your name obgy student it's better to have the name right okay so we have endometrial atrophy another answer yes okay so maximum people are answering endometrial atrophy is the most common cause of postmenopausal bleeding especially if the ultrasound is showing you a thin endometrium of 3 to 4 mm percentage of postmenopausal bleeding patients who have endometrial cancer percentage of postmenopausal bleeding patients who have endometrial cancer okay question number 6 so these percentages you know you should be aware um obviously we know that very few will will have it so it will either be what a or b so tell me okay we have one answer here no that's it. that is question number 5 you are answering let me have the answer for question number 6 good morning akshay okay 6b 6b okay okay some more people would like to try it is actually b it is 10% okay 10% will have endometrial carcinoma so if i tell you the percentages just to uh, recapitulate the theory which we'll be doing in the evening again so the causes of postmenopausal bleeding uh, 5% as such there is no category 10% is the lowest that is endometrial cancer 5 to 10% will have endometrial hyperplasia so almost the same category then comes 12% will have endometrial polyp that is again a sequelae of endometrial hyperplasia a patient who has had endometrial hyperplasia in the premenopausal age group she might end up with postmenopausal bleeding because that hyperplasia was still there and that endometrium grew and became an adenomatous polyp okay 25% will be because of taking estrogen replacement therapies hrts okay and 80% will be because of atrophy endometrial atrophy so that is how the figure goes it is 10% 10% 20% 20 and then it is jumping to 80% for atrophy all right all right i i definitely answered in english so napoleon for you i think it should be good that you have understood a 52 year old post uh, menopausal woman Menopause 3 years back presents with single episode of postmenopausal bleeding TBS shows endometrial thickness of 3 mm only what is the most st appropriate step in the management okay so you have to highlight all the main main points here what are the main main points that she is 52 year old 3 years menopause thin endometrium postmenopausal bleeding and what is the appropriate step you will do a fractional curettage you will do a hysteroscopy and biopsy you will perform a pipel aspiration you will review in 3 months or earlier if the bleeding occurs or you will do a hysterectomy obgy student i'll repeat the percentage okay it is 10% endometrial cancer 5 to 10% endometrial hyperplasia then just above 10% is 12% 12% will be endometrial polyp which will come in the same category as endometrial hyperplasia because that is the cause of polyp okay then from 12% it jumps to 25% when it comes to hrt or ert simply estrogen replacement therapy then it jumps to 60 to 80% 80% for endometrial atrophy all right so that is a percentage okay question number 7 what will you do 
okay we have four answers and they are all right it is review in three months because she is she is having a very very thin endometrium so probably it is just an endometrial atrophy you can just give her some estrogen maybe uh, if if the bleeding is torrential you can give her estrogen or you can just uh, tell her that we can wait if the bleeding is not that bad if it recurs then we might have to give you some treatment okay so just wait and watch then again, a 52-year-old postmenopausal woman uh, presents with single episode of postmenopausal bleeding. 52-year-old postmenopausal TVS shows endometrium of uniform thickness of 6 millimeters. This time it is 6 millimeters. Okay. Now, what is the most appropriate treatment? So, for a postmenopausal woman, anything above 4 millimeter needs to be evaluated. What will you do now? And another thing that is important in the question is the uniform thickness. That is very, very important. That is That will decide what kind of treatment are you going to give or investigation will it be fractional curettage or hysteroscopy biopsy or simply a PPL aspiration or do a TAH nil nil ma'am how you manage all things together kindly guide passion profession social life <laughs> nil nil I love my life and I love doing whatever I'm doing I give my 100% to everything let it be profession let it be teaching let it be fashion let it be anything Okay, so 8A and 8B. We have two answers. Another answer is B. Um, again, B. Guys, you're getting confused. It's a uniform thickness. It's a uniform thickness means the endometrium is not showing any irregular thickening. It is a uniform thickness all over. So what will you do normally? If just a uniform thickness is there. Okay, it will be a performing a PPL aspiration. That is the answer. OBGY, you are right. So you got the hint here. So why will we do a PPL? Because it is a uniform thickness. We are not suspecting any localized swelling there. If there is a localized swelling, then we will do a hysteroscopy and biopsy. But the best for everything is fractional curettage, right? <coughs> best would be fractional curettage. But as such in your books, the answer is PPL aspiration because they want you to understand that uniform thickness does not need any invasive hysteroscopy to be put, put inside. PPL is a simple outdoor biopsy. You can just put that flexible cannula inside the plastic PPL cannula and you can just aspirate the uh, fluid in the OPD itself. You don't need to put the patient to sleep, right? Next question, similar question, 54 year old attained menopause two years back. So it's a short history of menopause. Okay, and single episode of bleeding, TVS shows endometrial thickness of 4 now this time, 4 millimeter with an area of focal thickness. There is no uniformity and there is 6 millimeter thickness. What is the most appropriate step in treatment? Now you know this. <coughs> okay, question number 9. Yes, now you got the hint. So it is a, a, a ununiform, non-uniform thickness where the endometrium is showing a focal thickening of around 6 millimeters here. But otherwise it is generally just 4 millimeters. So because there is a focal thickening, so you will do a hysteroscopy. Fractional curettage is the best and gold standard. But hysteroscopy and biopsy would be the treatment of choice here. Or the investigation of choice. Screen, screening is not done for which cancer? Cervical cancer. Uh, cancer breast, cancer ovaries and cancer endometrium. Which cancer does not need a screening or does not actually have a screening uh, protocol? Okay, question number 10 please. I will read out the answer, the explanation for this. First, you give me the answer. 10, C, D, okay. So, cancer ovary, cancer endometrium. Okay, okay. So, you are getting confused between ovary and can endometrium, right? Now, endometrium is the answer here. Cancer ovaries, we still do the BRCA gene and the Lynch 2 syndrome because they are related with some genetic screenings and we do a prophylactic oophorectomy also for them. Okay, for cancer endometrium, let me read out the answer for you. There is no universal screening. Screening is done only in the Lynch 2 syndrome that is HNPCC that is uh, uh, non-polyposis colon carcinoma, right? The hereditary non-polyposis colon carcinoma which is also known as Lynch 2 syndrome. 
screening method how do you do you do a pelvic examination because they are related with endometrial carcinomas they are related with breast carcinomas ovarian carcinomas and colon carcinomas so you do a pelvic examination you do an endometrial sampling you do a transvaginal sonography and a fractional curettage just to check that they are not developing endometrial cancer best screening method for them would be age screening up to 35 years and uh, best method to prevent cancer obviously will be a prophylactic hysterectomy with bilateral salpingo-ophorectomy if the family is complete in these patients okay so the screening is not done in which cancer that is cancer endometrium then comes cancer ovary then comes breast and last is cancer cervix because that has the maximum amount of screening material available maximum um, uh, number of screening protocols available in the form of pap smear cins bethesda system so much is there okay then question number 11 a 65 year old woman presents with postmenopausal bleeding biopsy shows grade 2 endometrioid carcinoma it is grade 2 at the fundus okay she has uncontrolled diabetes she has hypertension okay so what is this this is what a corpus cancer syndrome it has it, she has hypertension she has diabetes and of course they have not told whether she's obese or not but she is probably having this syndrome because she has all the high risk factors okay so what is the most appropriate treatment in the management where is my cursor it is so difficult to find the cursor there it is okay so hypertension, diabetes, grade 2 endometrioid carcinoma, postmenopausal woman, 65 year old, what will be the step, the best step in management? What will you do now? Will you perform TAH and BSO or you will do a TAH, BSO with pelvic and paraiotic lymph node dissection or you will do a surgery followed by radiotherapy or you will first perform an MRI scan. Langpoklum, the ovarian cancer is diagnosed late because the symptoms, they do not uh, correlate with the kind of cancer, the staging. They generally present with gastritis, bloating, and they generally happen in obese women who just blame it on their gastritis. And the, the size of the cancer and the spread of the cancer has no relation with the kind of symptoms that the patient is having. So sometimes grade 3, grade 4, stage 3, stage 4 may just have simple symptoms like gastritis, nothing else. Okay, So it is not related to the size. That is why ovarian cancer is diagnosed very late. So 11, B, C, A, we have all the answers here. What are you missing? Tell me. What are you missing? We know that she needs surgery. But why, why will you jump into TH, BSO or you will do a pelvic and paraiotic lymph node dissection unless you know what stage it was. They have not told you the stage. So first you have to do an MRI because any surgeon would first like to assess the staging what is the staging of this cancer then they will perform a hysterectomy followed by a paraiotic or pelvic they just have a, a biopsy finding an endometrial biopsy finding which is telling you that it's an endometrioid type of carcinoma which is grade 2 obviously it is more than grade 1 so she will need some radiotherapy later on or uh, paraiotic or pelvic lymphadenectomy depending upon the staging so we have to do an MRI first okay so it is 11a now, a 54-year-old woman presents with postmenopausal bleeding. Biopsy shows endometrioid variety again, endometrioid, right? Now, endometrial cancer of 1 centimeter at the fundus. Histology shows grade 1 tumor. This is a grade 1 tumor. MRI, the findings of MRI are showing less than 50% of the myometrial involvement, okay? So, that is stage 1. Next step is what? What is next step? Now you know that the staging MRI is showing you less than 50% myometrial involvement. It is grade 1 tumor, okay, and it is endometrioid variety, not a very invasive one, okay. So that is the hint. So what will you do now? Question number 12. Change the type of surgery? Yes, OBGY, you will, we will decide depending upon whether it is a stage 1 or stage 2 or it is an advanced stage. Depending upon that, we will do the paraiotic lymphadenectomy. Why will we go for paraiotic lymphadenectomy in endometrial cancer, which normally would spread first to the pelvic uh, regions, the pelvic tissue, the pelvic lymph nodes, then it will later on go to the paraiotic. It is not like ovarian which goes first to the paraiotic, okay? So first you have to stage the cancer. In any surgery, no surgeon would touch the patient unless there is staging uh, done with the help of MRI or CT scans, even in cancer cervix, okay? So 12, what will you do in 12? Now we know that it is grade 1, low grade and it is stage 1. What will you do now? 
okay yes that is the answer it is tah with bso but then you have to be very careful once you have done the surgery you have to send that for biopsy and you have to see that the staging uh, which was diagnosed by mri was absolutely right if in staging they feel that no it was not endometrioid or it was not grade 1 it was grade 2 or maybe the capsule the myometrial involvement was probably more than 50 percent because after you remove the uterus you can do a proper biopsy the pathologist will tell you that no she needs further treatment there may be some microscopic metastasis in that case you will uh, probably then put her on chemotherapy depending upon what the onco surgeons and the oncologist decide okay now question number 13 a 52 year old female has endometrial cancer of the endometrioid variety so they just stuck with this question only endometrioid limited to the endometrium now this is not going into the myometrium also just limited to the endometrium grade 2 stage 1a okay so they've given you everything the tumor has not spread outside the uterus size of the tumor is 3 to 4 centimeter what is the most appropriate treatment management now So, stage 1A, grade 2, endometrioid, okay, not even gone to the myometrium and the size they are telling you 3 to 4 centimeter, okay. So, what will be the treatment? You are welcome OBGY. Question number 13, what will you do now? Here the hint is the size of the tumor, okay. Size of the tumor is a hint because what you have written Dr. Zebunisha, even I think that must be the answer which most of the people must be thinking. Okay, anybody else wants to try? So the hint is the size of the tumor, otherwise stage 1A grade 2 okay it is not grade 1 it is grade 2 but still it is just within the uterus within the endometrium so you will think th bso would be fine but it is the size of the tumor which is more than 2 centimeter so you will not just go for bso you will go for a pelvic lymphadenectomy as well okay so you will do tah bso with pelvic lymphadenectomy because if the size of the tumor is more than 2 centimeter you have to remove the pelvic lymph nodes as well okay is that all right Pachu? Satra Lok, 60, 17 people are listening. Okay, yeah, fine. 56 year old female presents with postmenopausal bleeding. Now the diagnosis is grade 2. Clear cell carcinoma, that is the notorious one. We just read it, that is the most dangerous one. Okay, grade 2. MRI is less than 50%, still in stage 1. Okay, stage 1B. Now, what will you do? What is the next step? They have not told you the size, they told you the variety. It is grade 2 and it is clear cell. What will you do now? okay yes you are right it is 14 c so let me just read out the chart for you here if it is a clear cell or a papillary serous okay then tah with bso with pelvic and paraiotic lymph node dissection so these are the two notorious ones and out of these two if you get a choice then it is clear cell okay obgy because you answered clear cell and papillary in the previous one now for the clear cell and papillary series, they don't care whether it is <coughs> stage, well, what stage it is. They just do TAH, BSO, paraiotic and pelvic lymphadenectomy. But when it comes to the endometrioid variety, then we do a staging with MRI. If it is limited to the uterus, then what do we do? If it is limited to the uterus and it is stage 1A or 1B, uh, that is less than 50% of the myometrium is involved, then we just do a TAH with BSO. Now, depending upon the grading, if the grade is obviously stage uh, grade 2 or grade 3, then you will we will jump into TAH, BSO with pelvic and paraiotic lymphadenectomy. Okay? Then in grade 2, they are saying if the size is less than 2, then it is simply TAH with BSO. Grade 1 and grade 2, when size is less than 2, they simply do TAH BSO. But when the grade 2 is showing a size more than 2 cm, then we do a pelvic lymphadenectomy, but not paraiotic. Paraiotic is done only in grade 3. 
all right then coming to the cancer spread beyond the cervix that is obviously outside the pelvis now they are going to the um, uh, outside the pelvis outside the true pelvis then you go, go for the parietic lymph node dissection all right so when it comes to clear cell and papillary serous irrespective of the stage and the grading TH, BSO with um, paraiotic and pelvic lymphadenectomy and sometimes even omentectomy depending if they are suspecting a papillary serous carcinoma that might involve the omentum as well okay okay uh, Dr. Ashma ma'am for 2A what's uh, 2A oh you're asking about the staging we'll discuss this in the evening okay because we just finished 30 minutes and this is the time allotted to me so i'll just only do one more question and that's it drug useful in the stage 3 and 4 of endometrial cancer what drug do we use for endometrial cancer it's a chemotherapeutic agent they're asking so danazole cisplatin levonor gestrel or busulfan staging dr ashma okay so in the stage 2 definitely the all the endometrial cancers they have to be uh, removed surgically uterus cervix and of course the uh, the parametrium the parametrium as such in the endometrial cancer is not very very important it is a lymphadenectomy along with the paraiotic lymphadenectomy and let me come to the stage two here stage two obviously the cervix will be involved so the vardyne hysterectomy will be done pelvic and paraiotic lymphadenectomy and post operatively we can think about chemotherapy or radiotherapy so stage two because obviously the cervix is involved it, be it becomes a cervical cancer and cervical cancer spreads to the parametrium so it has to be a vardyne all right We'll do this in the evening class. Do attend the class at 7 p.m. today. So 15, okay, the answer is B. Yes, it is cisplatin because that is the chemotherapeutic agent. Paclitexel, cisplatin, these are the ones which are being used for endometrial cancer, just like the ovarian cancer. Uh, chemotherapeutic agents in the endometrial cancer is paclitexel, cisplatin, and doxorubicin. All right, so that's it, children. Ham Sham ko milenge around 7 o'clock. That is the time of the special class. Just one single class of 45 minutes today. Okay, thank you very much for joining, and uh, we'll all see you in the evening. Bye bye.